Hello and welcome to our special show, Gyan for Banks. For the second time in two years, India's top public sector bankers are in a huddle with top government officials and RBI officials. The second edition of the annual brainstorming meet called Gyan Sangam. The meeting today kicked off in Delhi in a backdrop of weakening bank financials compared to last year. Bad loans have risen by a whopping 50% from last year's Gyan Sangam levels to this year. 11 public sector banks posted losses, actually steep losses, in the December quarter. Even this happened only after the Reserve Bank forced an asset quality review, which has at least shown the magnitude of the problem at hand. The main theme of this year's brainstorming, naturally, therefore, is tackling the bad loan menace and the road ahead consolidation of public sector banks, financial literacy, financial inclusion, digital banking and the works. Over the next 30 minutes, we will discuss this with a special panel of experts. Joining us now are Mr. S.L. Bansan, the former chairman and managing director of uh, Oriental Bank of Commerce. I also have with me banking analyst Himendra Hazari and another financial services expert, uh, uh, Ashwin Parik. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Well, uh, 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 before we start the debate, uh, let me go to our reporters on the ground, on ground zero actually, at the Gyan Sangam premises, uh, Ritu Singh and Alexander Matthew. They have been locked out. Uh, they're standing act actually outside the gates of the Gyan Sangam premises, shooed away so that they don't hear the confidential conversation. But reporters by training, they have uh, cocked their ear and got a lot of uh, maybe uh, interesting and sensitive information. Well, over to you first, uh, uh, Ritu. What was the most interesting session or the most interesting tidbit you found out today in uh, the, what, uh, seven hours of meeting? Well, Lata, what I found most interesting was the presence of the CVC chairman at the public sector bankers meet. Now, you must remember, there is 8 lakh crores of stressed assets that exist in the system, and recovery at this point is high up on the agenda. There is intense pressure on the banks from both the government and the RBI for a speedier resolution of these stressed assets. And in these situations, we've seen a lot of banks uh, resort to even selling down their loans to, uh, you know, asset reconstruction companies uh, and the likes of KKR. And at this point of time, these public sector banks uh, do not want to be questioned in the future on any sort of rigging or any lack of transparency when they're selling down these roles. And therefore, there was a the first session of the public sector bankers itself was uh, with the CVC chairman, Mr. T.M. Basin, uh, where they did discuss measures where uh, banks were asked to be more careful in their documentation of various meetings uh, and everything uh, surrounding uh, their, uh, uh, you know, dealings with NPAs so that in future no questions are raised on the rigging uh, of such methods that banks may have to resort to in desperate times because remember, uh, failure of a company uh, or, you know, a bad business cycle is not necessarily a fraud. Uh, and when banks have to resort to selling down loans, uh, they must not be questioned in the future on the lack of transparency of these processes uh, or the fact that they had to sell down these loans at much lower values uh, than they had initially bought them. Okay. And therefore, what I thought was most interesting is the session with the CVC chairman uh, kicking off the Gyan Sangam with this particular agenda. That's certainly very interesting, uh, Ritu. I will keep coming back to you and to Alex for more such interesting tidbits. So it was not just a huddle between bankers and uh, RBI officials and government officials. It went beyond the normal, as you can see. Uh, well, let me uh, get Mr. Bansal in on this, uh, since he's a man who has been there, done that, before I get the experts who look at uh, uh, banking from their perch. Uh, Mr. Bansal, if you can hear me, uh, was this a good idea, you know, to first drop in the CVC so that uh, uh, when, as and when the loans are sold down, uh, the difference is understood between a business cycle that has gone sour and uh, cronyism or just fraudulent decisions. Yeah, Lata, good evening. So this is a wonderful idea. I think the presence of CVC there gives a lot of confidence to the bankers. And uh, to my mind, the bankers uh, should be encouraged to take decisions. And there is nothing wrong. If something has gone wrong because of business cycle or for other reasons, then naturally, the, we have to take a hit. As it is, uh, I think 50 to 55 percent provision is available with the banks. Fortunately, Reserve Bank of India has taken the lead, and uh, most of the NPAs are on the table. Maybe whatever is remaining will be there uh, during the 
when the March results will be out. Mm. Now the banks need to clean these balance sheet. Cleaning the balance sheet doesn't mean that you put all these assets on the table and then sit idle. Mm. Unless the bank dispose of these assets and the CEO of the company banks are mm. encouraged to take decisions and let them take hit, mm. say 25%, 30%, 40%, 40%, and in some cases even 50% hit mm. is not going to affect the balance sheet of the bank because as it is there are sufficient provision available in the mm. system. Naturally, it will uh, clean the system yep. and the banks will be uh, having a clean balance sheet and they will be naturally make some good money out of it mm. and future will be bright. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Bansal, uh, this is provided the decisions were taken in an exuberant uh, uh, period between 2004 and 2008 and maybe even 2010 when we thought, you know, uh, uh, 8, 9, 10 percent GDP growth is a birthright and uh, probably overpriced a lot of assets. But clearly some of it is cronyism, some of it is fraud. So, you know, how do you sift uh, the good from the bad. How is it that you ensure that uh, the decisions taken are not misspending public money or depositors' money? What suggestions do you have to make the process clean? See, let, uh, let us not discuss frauds. Now, I think there are other agencies to uh, take out these cases, but uh, let us be very careful when we identify which are the fraud cases and where the money has gone instead of the, the asking the bankers why you have taken these decisions. Mm, if enough. there are malefides, naturally that person need concern need to be punished. But otherwise, the system should uh, take its own care. Mm. Now see, this last 10 years, you need to break into four parts. Now from 2000, 2004 to 2008, there was an era when liquidity was abundance in system and the interest rates were as low as 4%, mm. 5%. Mm. Banks were rather running to uh, uh, after these uh, promoters mm. and these promoters were also having no i take your point i take your point mr bansal that an upswing became a downswing downswing which nobody realized except on hindsight but what i'm asking is that you know we've heard a lot of uh, angry statements coming from the courts coming from parliamentary standing committees coming from the cbi is there a way in which the process can be made transparent or above board. You, do you have any suggestions for that? Because while transformation of public sector banks is a much larger agenda, immediately it is trying to make money from bad loans that is going to be discussed, or I understand from my colleague is being discussed. So is there any suggestion uh, that you have? See, let, that, let us not forget two things. Let us understand the problem. See, for in 2008, when the problem was not so severe for India, mm. We allowed one-time restructuring with the result what happened. All those assets which were falling into NPA category were also restructured and the repayment was deferred by three years. In the process, interest is also added mm. and all these accounts started slipping to NPA category in 2012 onwards. Yeah. Number two, now economy is in downturn. We are seeing what is happening after 2012. Now, having said this, now the process, see, the process is very simple. You tell me there are all full proof mechanism available when the bankers are taking decisions, but still, unfortunately, there is one serious problem in the industry, which is not recognized till date. Mm. In 2004, five, I think this problem, people started saying with some softer voice, and it was... Uh, said in 2009-10 that? that banking industry is going to face huge HR challenges five years down the line. Mm. And now the major challenge is HR. you see, see the banks, what type of talents are available at middle level. Mm. I think we need to do a lot of training, a lot of grooming need to be done mm. before these people come and occupy the highest chairs. Mm. I think this is a serious, serious issue. We are discussing okay. only well, I one think, problem. I, I think you expanded the uh, terrain of discussion very well, uh, Mr. Bansal. I completely take your point that there is this missing <clears> middle <throat> that a lot of bankers talk about because recruitment wasn't very good. Uh, one more minute, if you can tell me any other idea that you think that the Gyan Sangam should, you know, get Gyan on. Yeah, but uh, now the, pro uh, the Gyan Sangam should deliberate on the subject how to dispose of these assets. Okay. And this is very quick. Bank need to do it in okay. the next 18 to 24 Fair months. Enough. 
before we lose out any further time. All right. I'll let you go on that note because I have two more experts and also two reporters on Ground Zero who are being shooed away uh, by the, uh, the watchmen at the SBI campus. So, Mr. Bansal, thank you very much for quickly taking time from your, uh, uh, from your very urgent uh, engagement. I'm coming to uh, Mr. Parekh and uh, Himendra in a minute. Alex, uh, anything, any tidbit that you want to tell me? Well, Lata, as you just said, we're likely going to have to peek over the wall to find out what's going on very soon. Mm -hmm. But going into the Gyan Sangam, uh, the most talked about point was the NPA issue for PSU banks. So obviously the session that was most looked forward to was really the session that was chaired by the RBI governor, Raghu Ram Rajan, where he had a consultative discussion with the bankers on the AQR process that led to most of the stress. In fact, it led to the, as you know, the 50% increase in NPAs in the, fourth, in the third quarter and is likely to lead to more pain. What is interesting is that this session was placed just before the bankers move into their working groups and one of the most important working groups out of those five is the one that's going to discuss NPAs and so obviously post the Rajan talking to they will probably have a lot to talk about and discuss and put on the table tomorrow uh, when they conclude. All right, uh, Alex, I think uh, you're all standing in the middle of the road and I, I will uh, try and make life uh, safer and easier for you all. Uh, 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 let you relax now and uh, toss the question to my guests. Uh, uh, Himendra, uh, well, uh, NBA management obviously will be uh, uh, the most important thing discussed. Uh, uh, what uh, would you expect, the what do you think the government should do? A stress tacit uh, uh, group or do you think... Uh, you know, there should be more uh, attention paid to how future NPAs are avoided. So I think the first thing is to identify what is the extent of the loss. Mm -hmm. Now, for that, you have to do a forensic audit of all these corporate accounts or, I mean, other accounts to find out what is the loss because, one, what is the value of the asset that sits on the bank's books? Now, it has got eroded really because on two counts. One is the demand slowdown. And second, there has been massive siphoning of funds also. So actually, even if the economy recovers, some of these assets have been highly inflated. So the banks and the government, being the primary owner, should know what is the extent of the whole. Now, once that is identified and that report can that be kept confidential, time, isn't it? Because so you it must know what is the whole. Today, we don't know all the no, analysts. Don't forensic audits take a lot of time, uh, uh, Mr. Parekh, to get you in on that? Uh, if one had to wait for forensic audits of what probably 3,000 accounts or yeah. uh, no. would, that would take a very long time, isn't it? We have to probably uh, do something more quick. We must. In fact, you know, to my mind, what will come out of a forensic audit or a review, you know, is who, I mean, between the borrower and the banker went wrong. I suppose what is to be emphasized now okay. at this point in time is the measures to recover or reconstruct mm. the assets so that the economic value can be restored. I suppose whether it is our vigilance, that is whether it is CVC on one side or whether it is our investigation agencies or the bankers themselves, mm. you know, I suppose if you really start creating a lot of evidence in terms of finding out where things went wrong or who went wrong, then once again we may take very long to resolve the mm. assets. Yeah. I suppose the need for the R is the methods of resolving mm. and that's where I thought some emphasis in the budget, mm. a larger emphasis is now being placed on asset reconstruction. Yeah. The direction seems to be quite good. Okay. The methods associated with asset reconstruction, for example, at the end of SB, SDR, if we recognize that a certain asset has to be sold, it has to be, I mean, a new management has to take over, yeah. we must start preparing and mm. identifying those effective managements yep. which are capable okay. and particularly on larger exposures. Yep. Actually, you Mr. Know, Parikh, on minor uh, and small Mr. exposures, we can do, I mean, other measures, but on larger, we must. Yeah, I, I take your point completely. It's just that we have to take a commercial break. I completely take um, uh, uh, Himendra's point that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have to know exactly who did the mistake. But the point is we've lost too much time already and the economy is not waiting. Uh, as it may get further depleted uh, uh, if one waited, so I guess the priority in terms of sequencing will be to first put whatever assets is possible back into action 
or to be stripped and sold off. So I take your point that in terms of sequencing, that is the more important thing to do. We have to take a break on that. But thereafter, I want both of you experts to give us some idea as to what are the other things like say HR or digital or financial inclusion that the Gyan Sangam should actually come out with in the next 24 hours. We are back in a minute with our experts. Welcome back to our special show, Gyan for Banks, the second edition of the brainstorming exercise between the government and public sector banks called Gyan Sangam kicked off today. And we have been talking to several banking experts, uh, among them uh, banking analyst Hemendra Hazari and uh, financial services expert Ashwin Parik on ways to transform India's beleaguered public sector banks. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Parik, uh, uh, what do you think the uh, meeting can do to give the bank boards bureau a checklist of things to do uh, uh, what what should be the areas of discussion yeah see i mean once again uh, in the new sort of uh, uh, let's say arrangement bbb is going to play significant role there are three things you know i mean in the construct of bbb itself these were ori originally envisaged, and I suppose going forward, they will have to be done. One is the whole concept of creating some kind of an hold co on top of the public sector banks. You know, once again, to make sure, and, and, and if I were to go by Shamla Gopinath uh, Committee's working group's recommendation, the idea was to create another layer from where capital can be raised, because the hold co and the banks themselves can both the entities can be listed at the market. So that was one. The governance, I mean, and the entire order of governance at the banking is something that the BBB will have to address. And now the budget gives out a third agenda, mm -hmm. and an important one is whether consolidation of public sector banking can be really looked at by BBB more closely. So it's an extension of Section 9 of the Nationalization Act of Banking Companies, of public sector banking companies, okay. where uh, BBB will be empowered on behalf of the central government to look mm. at that. Okay. Well, I just have to uh, explain for those who are not banking aficionados that uh, uh, Mr. Parikh is referring to the Bank Boards Bureau, a special organization that has be, that is going to be created starting April 1st. Mr. Vinodra has already been appointed chairman of that board. It's supposed to have seven members, but four names have already been announced. Uh, Vinodra chairman, uh, Anil Khandelwal, former CMD of uh, Bank of Baroda, Rupa Kudwa, formerly with uh, uh, Chrysal, now with uh, Omidyar uh, uh, Private Investment Group. And uh, uh, was, was the fourth person, uh, uh, well, uh, Mr. H. N. Senor, uh, formerly CEO of Indian Banks Association and, of course, former managing director of ICICI Bank. So quite a few private sector experts have also been roped in. And, uh, uh, well, just a very quick question, uh, Mr. Parik. You were saying that the holding company which will own all the shares, public sector shares, should be created. Can that be created without amending the Banking Regulation Act or whatever, uh, the, taker of the Takeover of Banking Undertakings Act? the BR Act? Well, no, I mean, uh, the both the nationalization uh, of Banking Act, that is the Public Sector Banking, uh, the BATU, yeah. uh, the uh, Acquisition and Transfer of Undertaking Act, as well as the Banking Regulation Act will have to be amended, okay. you know, uh, in order to do, to do that. But I suppose, mm. you know, if, uh, if we were to follow some of the models that the other economies or jurisdictions have followed, mm. China, of course, in, is case in point, Korea is case in point. Mm. Then I suppose uh, even if that, that, let's say, the parliamentary approval is obtained and if we can get there, mm. then the burden that the, 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 the government is facing today in capitalizing yeah. public sector banking companies can be reduced yeah. okay. you know, to a certain extent. Yeah. And I suppose, I mean, such a bureau can play a much larger role yeah. as, as, as the shareholder of those companies. Okay, uh, you know, Mr. Parekh, I take your point. It's just that I'm a little worried whether uh, any act can be passed. Uh, the parliament has not been able to even amend uh, things on which all parties had agreed. So just some skepticism over that. Uh, Himendra, what would be your uh, you know, checklist of things for the government to do, bank board bureau or however? One is government should inject equity. 
this kind of budgetary allocation that they are doing is too small to make any significant, uh, you know, material no, impact. He, he agrees with you, but he only thinks that. Now, the second is, I think the government should form an expert panel, mm. which includes seasoned bankers, which includes but lawyers. But that's the bureau, isn't it? Yeah, but includes lawyers, auditors, and people specialized in asset recovery especially on corporate asset recovery, which can enable these banks to recover these kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, dud loans which they're sitting with. Because okay. once you form a crack team and they, you know, g get to work, then the probability of getting some asset recovery is much higher than what it is. I would also like to add this problem that you're seeing today is not endemic only to government banks. After all, Standard Chartered Bank, you know, which pays market salaries at a very, very <laughs> attractive market salary to its senior management, ended up with a loss of 6,700 crores on its India operations. And new private sector banks, corporate portfolio, be very similar to Standard Chartered Bank's uh, Port India portfolio. So this problem is not endemic to government banks. It is not just a problem of poor quality management. It is this, what the type of management is there in public sector is obviously also there in, you know, in Standard Some Chartered extent. Bank because that's the kind of loss that you have seen there. Now, I would largely take your point, and actually this coming from a, a, a banking e uh, expert who has no, uh, you know, stakes in the public sector banks is most welcome because it, uh, that is an objective view. But it is also true that public sector banks have almost doubled the amount of bad loans that the private sector, uh, the private sectors after the asset quality review showed much more bad loans. But still the problem is a little more acute with the public sector banks. Uh, uh, but what's your uh, best guess? Do you think the problem... Uh, uh, the, the worst is over for public sector banks and uh, uh, FI17 will be a slightly better year both in terms of governance and financials? I wish I could share your optimistic view. But it's a question. But I have, I have, my view remains consistent for the last one to two years that the worst is still to come. Okay. And the reason why I say that is that there are still a lot of troubled business groups mm. which have an exposure to the banking industry for minimum 50,000, 60,000 crores for each group. Mm. Now, these assets have yet to be identified as bad assets. Then only can we know the extent of the problem. As I've been saying for some time, you know, even the shock that you've got in Q3 is just the tip of the iceberg, okay. unfortunately. Okay, that looks like a, a, a rather a difficult problem to crack for sure. But uh, while we wrap up this edition of our discussion on Gyan for banks, uh, let's uh, 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 just inform you that we will have yet another session of uh, Gyan for banks tomorrow at 7 p.m. when the Gyan Sangam would have concluded. We will have our experts join us again and uh, we will uh, try and analyze what is the recipe for resurrecting and reviving the public sector banks. Thank you for watching this edition.